Hi, this is Mark G0MGX. Been asked a few questions recently about Logger32 and how I use that for fairly advanced tasks of cat control and cat being computer aided transceiver. So I tend to use my logging software to configure my radio with single clicks for different modes and different setups. Um, and a few people have been asking me questions about how I do that. So I thought I'd put a short video together to show you that. Now, I use a piece of software called Logger32. Uh, it's by K4CY, a guy by the name of Bob. And there's plenty of support available for this. It's a free logging application which runs on Windows. It does all the things I want from a logging software. So it uh, interfaces to Logbook of the World. Um, I can import logs in ADIF format from various other applications like the WSJT suite. I can export to club log and it gives me full cat control. On top of that it also has support for a number of digital modes including RTTY and PSK. Now if we actually look at my Logger32 screen which is here, there's a number of windows up. Now the, the thing with Logger32 is everything about this is configurable. So you have a main Logger32 window which sits around the whole thing and then all of these windows inside here are all things that you can set up and move and position how you particularly want them. So just give you a quick rundown of what these windows are before we focus on some of the more detailed stuff around cat control. So here we have a Telnet connection to NHARG which is Nuncefield House Amateur Radio Group. It's a local club that provides a Telnet based DX cluster service. I connect to that over the internet and this provides me with two basic pieces of information. The first one being solar information, which is down the bottom here. I use WCY because that's more relevant in Europe than, in, uh, than the US based one. So at 11 o'clock today, we had a K of one, an A of seven, uh, R is zero, wow, and the solar flux is 70, which is quite spectacularly rubbish, really. Um, and the other thing that this gives me is DX spots. Now you'll see that as the DX spots are coming in, then so the different spots are displayed on different band plans down here. There's colour coding associated with this which again is all configurable but what the orange is telling me is a new band slot so that means that for example OK8 Czech Republic, I'd never worked the Czech Republic on 30 metres uh, which is why it's orange. If it had been green that would have been an all-time new one. It would have meant that that prefix is not in my logbook at all. So that gives you some idea of what this is doing. Now the basic cat control for the, for the radio uh, is configured up here. In this example I'm using a TS990 which is connected to COM5 with a board rate of 57.6. Now in that radio there's a menu number 7 which is called rear connectors where you set up the board rate. As long as those two things are the same and you've got the driver installed you should be able to connect to the radio fairly quickly. Um, once you've connected to the radio that pulls in some bits of information like the frequency, the mode and the band. I'm currently sat on six meters doing something a bit bonkers. Um, but for example if I were to come down here and say oh well, look there's, there's a particular station on 20 meters that I'm interested in. If I click on that, that automatically tunes the radio, sets the mode and gets me ready to work that particular station should I so desire. Now here I've got a great circle view of, of the world centered around my my little house which is of course the center of the universe and it's very windy today which is why this is moving around a bit I think but this allows me to control my rotator I've got a fairly simple Arduino based rotator controller by a guy called K3NG that interfaces to my Yesu G1000 control boxes which are in the room here but this allows me to also set up things like, so where I clicked on this DX, it tells me that the bearing is 258 degrees. I can, if I should want, I can get the beam to turn automatically to point at the DX. This is also configurable by band. So for example, if I switch bands on mine to 30 meters, you'll see that that pointer disappears. And that's because I don't have a directional antenna on 30 meters. My directional antennas are only from 20 meters and up. So if we go back to 20 meters, you'll see that the directional part appears again. Here we've got, this is my actual logbook. So these are the history of my QSOs. Green here means that um, it's confirmed. And in my case, that's configured to be confirmed either by Logbook of the World or by paper. Now, Alpha 71 Alpha Echo happens to be a pretty good chum of mine. I've been to Qatar many times. Um, the other thing that's in here, for, for example, so let's pick on another spot. So let's just pick on uh, European Russia. So it tells me here that the, the, the spot I've collected is European Russia. This work confirmed window here, red means confirmed, 
blue means just work so it tells you by band and mode how your work confirm status is for that particular entity this is the the window that's really of interest and this is called the radio control window and in here you'll find a whole bunch of goodies that uh, I'm going to talk you through now so we'll take a little bit of time now uh, look at some of the cat control commands how you configure them in logger and I'll try and give you some examples of how I've set this up so just about every modern radio on the market today includes cat control I think the first one that included it was the Yaesu FT1000 uh, but I might be wrong but the command set there was fairly basic now every modern radio will have either a dedicated manual or a bunch of stuff in the the main user guide which tells you what the commands are on Yesu and Kenwood they tend to be fairly intuitive uh, on icon they're very hex based and a lot more difficult to figure out um, but let's look at a very simple exam example here so for my Kenwood radio if I want to set the operating mode remotely I use a command called OM OM has to have two parameters. Parameter 1 is either a 0 or a 1, which tells me whether I'm setting the operating mode for the main band or the subband. And then following that, you give it parameter 2, which is the actual mode that you want. So for example, if we wanted to set the main band to be upper sideband, we would send the command OM 0 2 semicolon. And that would convert the that would set the radio mode to be upper sideband on the main um, main VFO. Now every one of the buttons on this particular screen is completely configurable from colour to text label to the commands that sit behind it. So for example this button here I've just right clicked on that to get the contents of it. The first line in this particular set of macros here which I've labelled USB does exactly what we just said it sends OM02 semicolon. The dollar command and the dollar on the end are the wrapping you have to put around the cat control command within logger 32. If this was an icon command you'd have to have dollar hex command but for Yesu and Kenwood it's dollar command. So that sets the radio into upper sideband. I can then go through and do a whole bunch of other configurations that I want for the upper sideband setting. So I want a particular filter selected so that's done by FL three zeros. I want low cut at 300 hertz, high cut at 2600 hertz. I want the RX equalizer on. I want the flat response for the RX equalizer. I want the TX equalizer on. I want a high boost setting for that. I want to turn split off and I want a slow AGC. So that just gives you an example of a fairly complex sequence of commands that if I were to do manually every time I went into upper sideband, I'm absolutely confident that I'd forget or get something wrong or not quite get it how I want it. Whereas once I've documented it and configured it in this macro, a single click does that for me. Now the other thing that I do with my 990, um, which I suppose is in a fairly complex configuration, is I use it with transverters. I have two transverters here one for two meters and one for four meters. They're both from uh, Sam G4DDK, uh, variants of his Anglian 2. They're external to the TS990 and they interface using the transverter drive socket on the back of the radio and also the RX antenna socket. So for example, if we were to look at the command set that I use to put my radio into two meter mode, then you'll see I set the command correctly using OM0D which in this case happens to be upper sideband data because this button is more configured towards meteor scatter and data modes. I set the, uh, the main and the sub VFO frequencies. I set the transverter offset to be 116 megahertz. Switch on the transverter, switch on the drive socket and the RX antenna, switch off the, both the preamps, switch the equalizers off, switch on the band scope, set the power control to the appropriate level to drive my transverter and set my scope reference to minus 10 dB. Now I'm sure you'll agree that if I were to try to remember to do that every time I'd be scratching my head or looking in a notebook whereas this just gives me a simple way of doing this a single click at a time. So we'll have a look at the example of how the radio operates when we do that particular command. <laughs>
So the other example I wanted to show you is once we've done the complexity of putting the radio into transverter mode, I've got another macro here which kind of reverses all of that. It switches it all off, switches off the drive socket and the RX antenna, puts the preamps back on, puts me back into upper sideband mode, puts the uh, TX equalizer back where it was, and basically puts the radio exactly back as I had it. And again, trying to do that every time manually would be quite a struggle for me, I'd never remember. But once I've got it done in here and working, I don't need to worry about it again. So I hope you found that of some use. Uh, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to stick them in the comments or reach out to me through QRZ. Um, more than happy to help. And if there's anything else you need help with with Logger32, just give me a shout.